Did animals suffer and die before the fall of Adam and Eve? As a young Earth creationist, I personally believe that the biggest problem with theistic evolution in old Earth creationism is the full acceptance of the suffering of animals before the fall. In the book Evolution and the Fall, theistic evolutionists William Kavanagh and James Smith, they say this, from what he seems to tell us via the book of nature, the mechanics of creational unfolding was an evolutionary process. The emergence of new life was governed by the survival of the fittest, such that biological death and animal predation are part of this process, even part of what can be acclaimed as a good creation. The word good is in quotes because they are referencing and referring to the words of Genesis 131, where the text says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. But is animal suffering really good? I will attempt to answer this question by first appealing to our experience with suffering and then concluding with an appeal to scripture. And for those that get a little bit emotional, you may want to skip the next few slides. A reaction, by the way, that is telling in and of itself. The cuckoo bird, unlike other birds, does not lay her eggs in her own nest. Instead, the cuckoo mother will lay her eggs in the nests of the much smaller warbler bird. When the cuckoo chick hatches, her first instinct is to push the warbler's eggs out of the nest. If the warbler's eggs have already hatched, then the much larger cuckoo chick will proceed to push the warbler chicks out instead. These chicks either fall to their death or drown in ponds. Paradoxically and equally disturbing is the subsequent behavior of the mother warbler who then raises the warbler imposter as her own, even though this little vagabond has killed her biological offspring. The parasitic behavior of the ichneumon wasp is even more disturbing. This particular wasp likes to lay her eggs within the tissues of unsuspecting caterpillars. After the larvae hatch, they feed on the caterpillar's tissues but are very careful not to kill the caterpillar by eating vital organs. Once the larvae break through its skin, the still living caterpillar not only builds them a protective cocoon, it actively guards the cocoon against harmful invaders, not even taking a break to eat. Eventually, the caterpillar zombie literally starves to death. These examples of intense animal suffering are only two of literally thousands. Responding to the behavior of the cookie bird, atheist Stephen Jay Gould, he says this, I must confess that nothing makes me angry about the bad things in the world than the sight of the poor warbler mother bird feeding the cuckoo chick, even after the chick threw the warbler bird's eggs out of the nest. Uh, Gould and in fact many atheists find no comfort in Kavanagh and Smith's claim that such behavior is in fact good. Speaking of the Ickerman wasp, Charles Darwin in a letter to Asa Gray said, I own that I cannot see as plainly as others do, and as I should wish to do, evidence of design and beneficence on all sides of us. There seems to me too much misery in the world. I cannot persuade myself that a beneficent and omnipotent God would have designedly created the ichnema wasp with the express intention of their feeding within the living bodies of caterpillars, or that a cat should play with mice. Two more examples and then I'll be done. In 2014, a sloth bear at the Smithsonian National Zoo ate two of her own cubs for no apparent reason. Uh, thankfully, the third was rescued by zookeepers, but why is it that the rescue of this third little cub causes our hearts to be elevated? Between 2004 and 2008, a group of scientists studying tamarind monkeys in the lowland forests of the Amazon, uh, they reported several acts of infanticide. In one particularly gruesome and disturbing case, the scientists actually witnessed a tamarind mother snatch her own infant child and bite through her skull. She then proceeded to eat the baby's 
head. And what are we to make of the intense suffering brought about by tsunamis and earthquakes? Disasters that, according to all theistic evolutionists and even many old earth creationists, occurred prior to the fall of Adam and Eve. What about cancer and the debilitating nature of ravaging diseases? Were these afflictions really part of an originally good creation? How are we to respond to such people when they ask us the question, why? Given a young earth creationist perspective, I can at least tell them that the world is broken, uh, that pain and suffering is actually not good and is ultimately a consequence of human sin, but that one day God is going to set everything aright. Well, in part two, I will continue this discussion by looking at what the scriptures have to say. So that's all from me, Ken Colson here at Creation Unfolding. Uh, For other resources, please don't forget to go to my website, www.creationunfolding.com. And I have a book too, so go ahead and get that. If you thought this video was helpful, then it would be incredibly, incredibly supportive if you could hit the like button, subscribe and ring the bell. But I think the greatest support that you could provide me is prayer. If you did that right now, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you and goodbye.